Okay, so good evening, everybody, um, wherever you are in the world, or good afternoon, good morning. And you are with Christian Women in the UK this lovely Thursday, the 22nd of June. I don't know why I feel the need to say that. But anyway, I am here with the lovely Giselle. And Giselle, I think you've got, what's that Jewish hat you've got on called again? That? Yeah. What's the name uh, for it? Well, the the man's one is called a kippa. Mm. I, thought, I was going to say kippa, but I wasn't sure. What's the woman's one called? Uh, the woman don't have one. This is one okay. I made from a uh, a fascinator base. Well, guys, Ascot happens to be around, so that's Giselle's kind of heavenly inspiration. And Ascot. that's that's it. You <laughs> see, um, God told me to to cover my head, and I don't okay. always want to go about with a full hat on. So mm -hmm. I put that on and that's fine. That's, Excellent. The, that's, the, that's the crown of my head covered when I'm praying or preaching or reading the Bible or prophesying. My head's covered. Oh, wow. Excellent. So I'm sure you guys can see a reference to the Bible for that. And we have got the lovely Sidoni. She's Hello. not going to appear on my... my um... <laughs> so Sidoni is... I forgot to say Giselle is actually the lead pastor at Pearls of Grace Ministry in Stranra. And that's um, Scotland area. And Sidoni is the founder of the lovely group Christian Women in the UK. So if you've seen us online, if you've joined us, now you know who's behind it, right? Yeah. If you know, if you want to arrest somebody, you can see <laughs> in the UK. look at her face very well. She's the one to arrest. Oh. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, she and Giselle are like <laughs> twins. That's mm -hmm. all I'm going to say. <laughs> Uh, my name is Ngoom. I'm an admin here at Christian Women in the UK. Yeah, we love having you guys. We love having this natter with you every Thursday. We talk about things that are relevant in the world and how religion um, intertwines with culture, really, because we're supposed to be living out this faith. So, um, and you can find us on Spotify and uh, join us on Facebook if you're just coming across us online. And so, which other platform are we on? In terms we're of on every single platform where you can get um your podcasts on so apple google um or um amazon audible anywhere you get your podcasts from we're on there and we're on pretty much most of the social media platforms so instagram tiktok yes, we're about, so yes yeah, so tell somebody about us um mm -hmm. so far so good and we're really building a lovely community and we'll be telling you as things go by the developments that we're having so today we are going to be talking about an interesting topic we're going to be talking about how to live as a christian you know how to live the way god wants us to in a sinful world mm -hmm. you know many people and even non-christians are beginning to observe that we've always known that we live in a sinful world but things seem to be getting darker and darker mm -hmm. but we know that god's standards haven't changed right so how do you manage to live this life that God is asking you to live in this world that just seems to increasingly shun God? So the first thing that we're going to look at is, first of all, if you're just passing by, or maybe you don't really know, what would you say, and I'll start with you, Giselle, how does God expect us to live when we say that we're Christians? Uh, to obey his commandments. And to be like christ because that's what christian means christian means christ-like and yeah. if we're not being christ-like we can't call ourselves christians okay excellent so I'll then i'll go yeah so i'll go to you then sidoni um you know when we give our lives to christ right 
what is supposed to happen. So what's the difference between somebody who's not a believer and somebody who has decided, okay, I want to follow Jesus? I think, you know, the Bible makes it clear that there will, there needs to be a transformation, there's to be a renewal. Um, you know, in Christianese terms, we call it born again. <laughs> you're born again. So when you hear that term, you know, it's not that you're physically go back into your mother's womb and then you're born again. But it's this idea of a rebirth. It's this idea of a rejuvenation. Um, all the, the Bible says all things have passed away, at, you know, beholding the new things and you're a new creation in Christ. So there is going to be that um, transformation, that rejuvenation or, or, or rebirth really um, of your life. And that will come across in how you live your life. So you then, you know, you, you, when you're born again, the Holy Spirit comes and lives within you and the Holy Spirit is there to help you live a life that reflects um the choice that you have made for christ to be your lord and savior um, and that choice with the help of the holy spirit you get to live that out in your decisions in your actions in the way you treat other people so yeah that's that's what you should expect when you decide to make god your king and jesus your king okay that's really interesting so then in, in practical terms, and feel free to give me an example, if you could, when you look at yourself before you were born again, and now, what was the one thing that you thought, oh, wow, this is a tangible change? Girl, I am cool now, okay? No, I'm joking. But, um, do you know, the one thing I think has probably changed is my um, ability to offer grace to others mm -hmm. um, and my ability I mean I've always I am a pretty chilled out person so I'm not you know I'm, I'm slow to anger um That's a but, gift. yeah but that I is think, a gift yeah more and more what I what I've learned or what I'm learning or what the Holy Spirit has helped transforming me is this ability to recognize my own sinfulness um, and how much I have been forgiven of that. And so then that prompts me to forgive others um, and to offer that same grace to others. Um, and it's hard, especially in a world where, you know, today we call it a cancel culture. Um, yeah. But I always kind of remember, well, hang on a minute. I have been forgiven. I have been offered this grace that I don't deserve. Um, and the expectation is that I should be Christ-like. And so I should be willing to forgive even before people ask for forgiveness. Um, and I should extend grace to people and always look for the best in people and, and, and hope to believe the best in people um, and then wait for them to, to let you down. But I think, you know, step out in love and in faith first rather than cynicism and, you know, um, distrust distrustfulness and you know doubtful their doubts so yeah i think that's probably one of the, the the biggest change that i have seen to be able to recognize my own shortcomings but then also appreciate that despite those shortcomings i am so unconditionally loved and to be able mm -hmm. to pass that on to other people around me oh no, that's wonderful and that kind of summarizes what we're seeing we could just oh. stop here Oh, okay. But what about you, G? How did it, when was the moment for you that, you know, the penny dropped, you're like, wow, okay, I'm, I'm really, I'm a different person now. Really, honestly, when I came to in the hospital, when I had the accident and I had my encounter with God, mm. I really realized then that I was going to be a different person better person than what I'd ever been and just praise the Lord I had good guidance with my late husband who guided me how to open up totally to um, letting the Holy Spirit come in and do whatever he wanted get rid of things he didn't want and all the rest of and for me not to fight it and the transformation was very 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 quick and my late husband often told people Anybody that knew me, if they said they didn't believe in miracles, I don't believe in miracles, but just look at her because mm -hmm. I literally changed like that. 
Wow. I really, I, I really did. And yeah. um, it is all glory to God for it and you. And, 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 it, and it really is with just letting the Holy Spirit come in and take away everything he doesn't want, need or desire and let him replace it with what he does want. That's it. Wow, that's really powerful. It's really the power of the Holy Spirit, I think. <laughs> I'm just laughing because I'm thinking of myself. I think for me, the most remarkable thing that I felt when I became born again was inner peace. Yes. You no. Know, sometimes you, you think you're living your life okay because if you'd asked me before, I wouldn't have said to you that I was living a particularly chaotic life. I would have just said, okay, yeah. You know, there are challenges in life like anybody else, but I just keep on moving. But there was it, like, you know, when you realize that you had a problem only when the problem has been taken away, hmm. that's how I felt. Yeah. There was really, and I remember Sidoni saying that to me. <laughs> And I was like, oh my goodness, this is how you know how people are observing you. So, <laughs> and I even had somebody who was not a believer say that to me. So I was like, oh my oh, goodness. Okay. So you guys were sitting the whole time thinking, she's a bit of a thug and you said nothing. Well, yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> but so that's what the born again experience can do for you guys. And I think once when you get to know Jesus, you know, you feel this cloud of glory and you're very happy and you can almost be in this in this state of euphoria right you don't want to leave it's just like a lovely bubble but you still have to go out there in the world because Jesus mm -hmm. said you know you be in the world but you're not of it and I think you know let's actually dissect that Jesus what did Jesus mean in I think it was John 17 when he said you know I don't ask you to 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 take them out of the world but mm -hmm. keep them in it and protect them how are you supposed to follow that example as a Christian today? What does it even mean? G? Giselle, can you hear me? Oh, no, I think she's probably nipped off. Yes, you go on. Okay. Yeah, so I'll direct that question to you then, Sidoni. Okay. Well, I think, you know, Jesus was saying that we are in this world and so we will experience all the challenges that come with this world mm -hmm. we'll face the heartache the agony the grief the sickness the pain we're in the world and we're in a sinful place the betrayals mm -hmm. i mean jesus experienced all of, all of those when he was here but he was not off this world um, and so even though he was in the world he was tempted he was betrayed um, he was not of this world. And I think, you know, he's, his promise to us is that we'll go through all of that because we're in the world, but we, will, we won't have to do it alone. He, he'll be there with us. He'll, you know, he says to me, to, to us, um, come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, you mm -hmm. know, come and, you know, my, 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 my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Like he, he actually promises to, to relieve us of those he doesn't say i'll take the sickness away but he'll release the symptoms he'll make it lighter um and i think you know to a certain extent i think that should be the believer's hope um mm -hmm. the believers should really glory in that and and be excited and be encouraged by that because we know that this side of heaven for as long as we're in these human bodies our bodies are going to fail us at some point or the others. Mm -hmm. For some of us, our minds are going to go. We're going to have dementia, Alzheimer's. Some of us are going to struggle with mental problems. Um, but the believer's hope and encouragement is that death has been defeated um, and that Jesus is here with us to make that burden lighter. doesn't say he'll take it away. Um, doesn't mean he can't take it away doesn't mean he can't heal you uh, doesn't mean there's no such thing as healing of course he can should he choose to he's sovereign over everything but should he choose to leave you in your present situation he says his grace is sufficient for you and i think you know that's that's what we should remember that even though we're in the world we're not of the world we partake of its problems and its rituals and and, and you know the daily grind and hustle but we're not of this world because ultimately we are headed to a much better place where there's going to be our beauty and 
endless praises and endless hallelujahs to the king and we can just gaze upon the glory of christ and that's just amazing and that in itself for a believer is yeah i'm guessing it's nice just thinking about yeah, what it would me be too. Just yeah. <laughs> yeah. guys if you if, if you and i'm going to describe this for people who are listening on audio but you could see how sidonie's face lit up yeah. when she was talking about that right that hope <laughs> Yeah, and so Giselle Sidonie talked. She talked extensively of how you you operate from being in the world, but not of it. But for somebody who is not really, you know, who doesn't, is not very conversant with the Bible, they're thinking, what does it mean to be of the world? How would you describe that? Doing all the things that are nice to do, like going out clubbing, going out drinking a lot. I'm glad I found Jesus when clubbing was no longer interesting. <laughs> interesting to me anyway. My clubbing days were over by the time I met Jesus. <laughs> oh, you know, to me, I like to think of all those things are on the uh, the broad path because they all yes. look bright and you know, it's, it's like walking down the uh, down Las Vegas or something like that. You know, all the fancy lights oh, and everything and all the rest of it. Oh, mm. all looks absolutely gorgeous. Whereas a lot of people paint the Christian path to be doom and gloom and mm. boring. Like, that's wrong. That really is. You, you, you ladies know I often say that Christianity or Christian. There's a lot of Christians give Christianity a bad name. Mm. Well, the ones that go about all doom and gloom and wringing their hands and worry, of course, they're giving it a bad name. You know, if if, yeah. if if you went up all doom and gloom and worryful and uh, no smile in your face and everything. You need to repent or you're going to go to hell. That's not going to win anybody <laughs> to Christ, is it? No. Um, yeah. But if we can let people see how good it is to be a Christian, mm-hmm. to have that peace, that inner peace that we have. And as you said, Sedona, you know, he can heal today. He does heal today, but he doesn't heal everybody. But mm. we can have that inner peace. We can have spiritual healing. Mm. Mm. To, uh, 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 to see us through everything and that reminds me about a little clip uh, from The Chosen where uh, little James with the uh, gammy leg mm. wasn't healed and he asked Jesus to heal you know, Jesus told me he was going to go out and lay hands on people for healing I'm sort of you know, oh master how am I going to go out and do it when I'm uh, uh, crippled myself You, know, mm. uh, I need to be healed and Jesus told him no your faith people will see your faith so maybe that's why wow. we don't get healed all the time is because our faith in it that people have to see our faith our hope and mm. what jesus could do mm. and i that's a good point because i've often wondered about this that seeing somebody keep faith in the valleys of life yes mm-hmm. It's a lot more powerful to me anyway than somebody who's been healed of a terminal illness. Yep. Um, That's true. And, That's you know, true. There, there, was a, there was a black American pastor that said something and he said, the faith of the black community, the African-American community in America, um, in the same Jesus that was used by their oppressors to keep them as slaves mm-hmm. is testament to the goodness and and the mercy and the grace of god amen and wow, that's extremely powerful when you when you know and, and i often say when i see somebody who is suffering you know mentally or physically and yet they they love jesus even though they know that jesus yeah. has the ability to heal them and he hasn't done it to, and to me, that speaks a whole heap more than someone who's, who's stood up, rolled their mats and is jumping, even though they were, they were lame before. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, it's great. That's yeah. me falling in love with Jesus, isn't it? Because if you think about it, when you love people, you don't turn your back on them easily, even when they do things that you don't like. Mm. So that's really saying, yes, I may not be comfortable here, but I think you really, wow, Sydney, that's really a really powerful point. You really need to be in love with Jesus. Mm. And I think that's what it means to have a relationship. I mean, that's where we all really want to get to, right? The kind of mm-hmm. Job situation where, and I really love when Job says, is it like, yeah, though he's claiming, yeah, do I praise him? I'm like, what? Yeah. <laughs> that is, that is. That's just yeah. another level of love. 
Mm. And I, I think, well, I don't know about other people. I think I need grace from God for that because mm. on my own, I don't know that I could do that. I really don't, you know. Mm. And I love what you said. I, I hadn't heard that before, Sidoni, about um, the uh, African-American slaves in uh, mm. America, that mm. uh, their white slave masters and their black slave masters were you know, using this uh, Jesus. To them. Oh. I, I, and I cut my back teeth in my faith mm. in an all black church. I was the only white person there. Mm. <laughs> Gee. Oh, I tell yeah. you. I mm. tell you, the first mm. day I went in, I remember, I remember all these lovely mamas all looking at me and sort of you know, going, mm -hmm. she'll not keep up with us. And then so <laughs> talk, talking, talking, talking. And I'd been to the faith maybe only about um, a year and I'd gone to a few other different churches, but this mm -hmm. one ended up being sort of my, uh, uh, my home church. Oh, yeah. And they were all sort of, you know, that, you know mm, she'll not stick with us, so she'll not. What do you say? <laughs> Oh, did I last them out? I really did. Uh -huh. oh. I, I wow. should know how, how this honky was able to do it. I really did. I did. Well done. Well and, done, you. Um, I loved that church service because it was, well, that, 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 all the service there, because that was a church just across the road from one of the hospitals that Bubba was in. Mm -hmm. And oh, uh, wow. it started at 11 o'clock in the morning, mm. but there was no finishing time. <laughs> Sometimes That's like, the worship. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes about dog, four or five o'clock they would send out for pizzas. Mm. And uh, you got the full experience. Oh, I sure did. Oh, I did. <laughs> I loved going to that church. Every time mm. I knew there was a service at that church through the week or whatever. You were, you were there. I was mm. over there. Yes, yeah, I, I was. Yeah. So that, that was good teaching to me. And yeah, you're absolutely right. Their faith and everything that they've come through, every, mm. all their trials and tribulations and things. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Very, very, it's very, very much. I mean, what must it be like to hope for 400 years? You know, mm -hmm. maybe we should dissect that one day. But it's, mm -hmm. it's the African American story is just extremely unique and mm -hmm. a really powerful testament of faith, you know? Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. but I mean, we, when you look at the world today as a Christian, right, we, we see all the things that are going on. As a Christian, and we talked a little bit behind the scenes about relationships. We live in a world today that believes that, you know, forgiveness is for the weak. Like you said, cancel culture or, you mm. know, if you do something to me, as we say in Africa, do me, I do you, you mm. know, if you do something, I must fight back. Mm -hmm. How do you, and I'll say, for example, in the, in the workplace, right, you could be the only person there as a Christian and you have all these colleagues and people feel like, okay, if you do something to me, how do you as a Christian hold on to your faith in these environments, which can be really difficult and toxic? So Sidoni, I'm just looking at you for this one. I think, you know, it's remembering who you are mm. um, and remembering whose you are. So, you know, taking, taking, for example, the work situation, you know, you have people at work that gossip mm -hmm. don't get involved in that. You have yes. people that tittle-tattle don't get involved in that. Um you know and, and it's just being in the world but not of it and letting your light shine and 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 speaking the truth like you know don't go ramming it down people's throats I mean I don't but if if I were asked an opinion on something I would speak my opinion on it and if you don't want to know my opinion don't ask me if you do you'll you'll get my opinion um mm. But I think it's also having that measure of tolerance for other people and an and appreciation that you are light in a dark mm -hmm. world. And some people don't like the light. Some people are very happy staying in, in the dark, the dark and that's yeah. fine. <laughs> other people are drawn to the light yes. um, because they're inquisitive, because they're curious. There's no really depth into it. But again, and then other people actually want the light. They want the same light you've got for yourself. And it's sort of navigating and, and, and finding out who's who and being the light and shining your light out there. And when people yeah. see your light, which should be reflected in your thoughts, in your actions, in the way you treat people, um, mm -hmm. that should then point people to the cross because they'll be like, oh, 
why is she so different? You know, someone, yeah. let's, you know, take an example, a colleague wants to throw you on the bus or has thrown you on the bus. And they're expecting that the next time the situation arises, you will do exactly the same. Mm-hmm. And, and it's happened to me before, you know, in, in a place of work where, you know, colleagues have done things that are not particularly palatable to me. And they're expecting that my reaction would be one of, like you say, you know, um, vengeance. But I've turned around and I've said, actually, you did this. Now I have the opportunity to do this, but I am choosing to not do it because I believe we are both better than this. And I think we should stop the cycle before it spirals out of control. Oh, wow. Now, like you say, that colleague has looked at me and kind of thought, you, gosh, you're just weak. You don't know what to do. But what that's meant is that's stop that reaction, chain reaction. And it's gotten exactly. them to think about what they're doing. Um, and perhaps I, I hope and I pray that it's gotten them to reflect on their behavior. So I think, yeah, it's a hard one. But I think if we live out our Christian values every day in our work life, we are effectively the light shining out into the world we are the sorts of the earth and some people will avoid us which is fine some people will repel us we you know we'll we'll repel the darkness in some people and that's Mm -hmm. fine other people will be flitting in their um curiosity and that's fine and other people would really want to know what it is about us that makes us stand out so yeah yeah wow that that really sounds amazing and i think giselle you're a pastor and so I, th- I imagine you counsel a lot of people. So, you know, Sidonia has talked about a good example with the workplace, but I'm also thinking about how people socialize, right? You know, once upon a time, we were young people out and about doing a thing, <laughs> right? So I'm thinking of a young person or maybe even an older person, because when you meet Jesus, changes have to happen, right? And sometimes those changes are not always easy. Maybe Giselle, you've had to counsel people. So how do we, and I'm going to take, you know, a topic which may not be, something which may be unpopular, right? We live in a world where people feel that you can pretty much do what you like. And when it comes to sex, right, because we're going to talk about it, um, (laughs) you know, we live in a world where a lot of people don't see anything wrong with sex before marriage, Yeah, you know, or even extramarital sex, full stop. If you look in the media today, you know, it, it took me a while to look at films and I was talking with a friend at work and I'm like, oh my goodness, do you realize that looking back, Mr. Blanca actually glamorized adultery, you know? So we, as a Christian, you have a different mindset, right? How do you assert that mindset with your newfound faith? If you say you have a group of friends, you all used to roll one certain way, and now you're thinking differently. Sometimes it's difficult to be the only one. How would you advise somebody to go about that? It is, but you've got to make a stand for it. It's like even Sidoni saying that, uh, going up to a work colleague and saying, I could do X, Y, and Z back to you, but I'm not going to. That showed how, her strength. That showed you, you had so much strength. So being a believer, you've got to show your strength by stepping away from all your pals. If they're trying to encourage you to go out and sin by drinking and uh, having extramarital affairs and all the rest of it, all your old life, you got to move away from that because it's like you. Know, Jesus said, "He's the branch, branches, and we are the vines." Right, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. come September, October time. Any decent gardener goes out and cuts back harder rose bush. You've got to get rid of all the bad stuff of it mm. to encourage your growth for next year. So we've got to treat our relationships with our friends and everything like that. Mm. If we've got to mm. cut, we've got to cut them off. But yeah. it's hard. It is hard yeah. to do. It really is hard to do. Now, um, a new Christian and a, a new believer or someone even just thinking of coming to the faith, would I tell them that right away? No. I wouldn't. Um, yeah, I'm scared. Of it. Yeah, no, because that that really would frighten. That's for somebody that's um, a little bit mature. You know, they're they're not quite on full solid yet, but they're not on full milk. You can be a bit harsher with them. Um, mm. You have to treat it very carefully. You would really do. It's like when some people say to me when I'm when I'm evangelizing to them, and they say, 
oh, I don't want to become a Christian. I said, why not? Because it's so boring. I said, hi, is it? Well, I'm going to have to drink, stop drinking. I'm going to have to stop going out to nightclubs. And I'm going to have to stop smoking. I say, no, carry on and do that. But mm-hmm. I ask you to add to your lifestyle, go to a church service at least once a day, or sorry, once a week, and read your Bible for at least 10 minutes every day. Because mm-hmm. I know then in my faith, I know that the Holy Spirit will work on them. And see, in about six, eight weeks' time, mm. will not want to do it. So they have changed themselves mm. instead of somebody saying, you have to change. Mm. And what mm. you need with that then is a good team of prayer warriors behind that person. Oh, mm. You just preempted my next question. <laughs> okay, oh right. So, sorry. Mm. No, no, that's great. Because I was going to say, where do you draw the strength for that? Mm. as we established it's not easy mm. yes. and you're so right about the team of prayer warriors i think when you become a new christian you really need a support system because mm. a lot of the time you're walking into the unknown right mm. and like you said you know you may have preconceptions about christianity and you may think oh my goodness this is exactly what i thought this is boring i want to turn back and this is why you hear sometimes people backslide right because mm. i i think if somebody if somebody had preached to me and said because i would be like oh please you know because a i knew that i knew god okay nobody mm. could tell me that my way wasn't good enough but i think when i came to the faith it quickly i don't even know but i just had a, a, i was i had a very gracious salvation the mm. support system was there already and god is very interesting he will orchestrate things without you knowing because mm-hmm. see the new was actually a huge part of my support system <laughs> right like she used to you don't do that anymore you don't send me bible practice no because now she i expect you to share teacher. with other people right. <laughs> right? she was my bible teacher you know and she would send me these things and i would send her questions and she would answer but it was very interesting because i look back now right i've known i think she only actually knew my sister more but yeah. somehow i don't even know how we started exchanging messages mm-hmm. and for whatever reason as i was coming closer to my salvation Sidonia and I became even closer and we will have all these podcast worthy conversations yes, on WhatsApp. So it, it's really interesting to me. And then I didn't even really know that Sidonia was a born again Christian because we used mm. to talk about other things. Mm-hmm. But I remember that it was very easy for me to tell her that I'd become born again. Mm. I don't even know why, but she was one of the, this, I was like, okay, who do I tell this sort of thing to, right? Mm. Everybody's going to be like you, <laughs> you know? <laughs> So, but it was very easy and I think she just immediately slipped into that supportive role I was very very blessed mm-hmm. you know it, everything happened at the right time and I think it made my journey very easy mm-hmm. because you know sometimes when you you become born again it's not easy dealing mm-hmm. with people around you like we said you know seeing other people's reactions to your faith or you've had this amazing new found faith that you want to share with everybody and they're not as excited about it as you mm-hmm. so you a place where you can blow off steam mm-hmm. i mean there is a whole i would love to see what has been written about the psychology of people when they become born again because mm-hmm. i really feel like you need that place and i was really fortunate because sidonie was definitely there for me certainly one of many people who were there but mm-hmm. yes so i think it's a good idea like Giselle said attach yourself to a healthy church Mm-hmm. attach yourself like she said to good prayer warriors be one of them join your intercessory team it really does help the intercessory team in my church is amazing mm. and you know just do your best to find yourself in the community and i think that's why we have christian women in the uk mm-hmm. right yes. so Sidonie, maybe you can tell us because i know that you've helped a few new believers mm. so i think you're 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 all right you're all right but i think you know it's i was just thinking back to the bible and i think it's one corinthians chapter six has a very very good verse there about just remembering that everything is permissible for me but not everything is beneficial yes and i use that verse a lot with my kids and my kids are all under 10 right and it's just reminding yourself that of course you can do everything of course you can do anything you want you've got free will but not everything's beneficial to you in the long run in the short term um and reminding yourself of that so i think you know like you like you've both said a community is very important um but i would say even more than that is 
fall in love with Jesus. Yes. Okay. Not because you're scared of going to hell, not because you've heard really lovely things about, you know, church and Christianity and, and you know, you've heard really good things about what it is to be, your life is going to change and you're going to be so happy. That's why you want to be a Christian and you want this joy that everybody's talking about. No. Okay. Because you might actually become a Christian and then the devil realizes that you're target number one and literally the proverbial will hit the fan from the minute you accept Jesus. And you might actually look at your life and go, actually, this is worse than it was before I was a Christian. <laughs> okay. Yes, that but can happen. I would really encourage any new believer, first and foremost, to fall in love with Jesus. Yep. Wow, Just that's a great. Fall in love with who he is. But you can only really do that if you can humble yourself enough to realize how utterly bereft and sinful you are okay? mm. because it is only in that knowledge that you can appreciate what Jesus has done for you and not just have it as head knowledge but heart knowledge it's only in your knowledge of how desperately wicked your heart is and sinful you are that you could actually appreciate your unworthiness to be able to stand before God as a judge, that you start appreciating what Jesus has done to be able to give you that opportunity to stand before a holy God because you're covered in his blood. And I think for any new believer, you really need to get, that's the, that's the basis of the gospel, that's the basis of our faith, but you really need to fall in love with Jesus because when you do, when you do then you'll be able to go that's permissible but it's not beneficial like mm. i can do that but i don't need to it's not going to get me anywhere oh, when yes. you when you really fall in love with jesus then you you'll be able to stand strong and say well actually i could do this to you but i know jesus wouldn't want me to jesus would want me to love you and so i'm going to choose yeah. to love you and it might be hard right now, but I'm going to ask the Holy Spirit to help me love you the way he wants me to love you. And I think that's something that, you know, yes, by all means, have a lovely church community, have a lovely community. Join Christian Women in the UK. Actually, guys, we've just started, Giselle's just started a, every last Thursday of the month. We're having afternoon tea. So it's just a group of ladies that virtually come together, bring a piece of cake, bring a cup of tea, and we just have a natter about anything and everything none it's not a bible study it's not no, a teaching it's, it's enough it's just a conversation just a conversation yeah. a cup of tea if they've got knitting or crochet or embroidery or sewing yes. bring it along, bring it along. exactly yep. and it's just building those friendships because one of the really good things that we've found i've certainly seen recently in the last uh, nine months or so in the group is women actually finding each other locally and oh, that's excellent. really encouraged me in my spirit. Um, and, you know, just women going, where are you? I'm half an hour away from you. Oh, I'll be there in two weeks. Do you want to meet up for a sandwich? And just oh, wow. seeing those sorts of Holy Spirit filled friendships develop. Yes, um, exactly. It's a real balm to my heart and a real praise point to Jesus for enabling those. Because I know that, for example, those women that I know about, um, that have met those met other people up it's been this isolation has been a problem loneliness has been a problem and for some of them I think at least a couple of them their, their families are not even Christian so very often they're the only Christian in their household so for them to be able to have a Christian friend that they can meet up and not have to worry about what they say or how they sound that's a real blessing so yes I think you know community yeah. is certainly important but I would say fall in love with Jesus and who he is and what he's done. Because yep. out of that, the possibilities are truly endless. Like you can, you can literally move mountains. <laughs> yes. No, that's, that's true. That's, that's absolutely amazing. There's a song. I think I'm going to post it on the um, Facebook group, Falling in Love with Jesus. I'm sure you know mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Butler. That's a very cool song. <laughs> and that song helped me a lot because... For me, one of the things that I, I really had 
I was kind of like had a cursory interest in gospel music, right? Before I became a Christian. So I was like, okay, wow, now what do I do about this gospel music? I have to start looking for gospel songs. Mm -hmm. And I loved the jazz. So when I realized that Jonathan Butler, whom I'd known before he was a believer because mm -hmm. of my brother, award-winning jazz artist was a believer and he'd come out with this album. I was like, oh, praise the Lord. It mm -hmm. was exactly the sort of thing that mm -hmm. I could get with, right? But mm -hmm. this time you could hear the Holy Spirit in his music. So mm -hmm. it was a very good thing. I'm going to post that song and hopefully it will help you guys fall in love with Jesus. I think this is a whole topic that we can actually talk about one day. How do you fall in love with Jesus? Put but I, Yes, <laughs> you know, because sometimes like people need to know, like, how do you fall in love with Jesus? Right. Mm -hmm. In mm -hmm. fact, G, how, how did you fall in love with Jesus? Love Tell us a love story with Jesus. <laughs> I got smacked across the back of the head, across the behind, across the back of the legs, every which way I got smacked. <laughs> Jesus, uh, I love that guy. I, it was my encounter with God at the accident. And I really believe that Jesus came and sat and spoke with me in a lovely little part of a great big garden. Mm. Now, there was that encounter and I've had one, two, three, I've had four prophetic dreams in which Jesus has appeared to me in the dreams, but wow. never once have I ever seen his face. Okay. That's it's what I was just, gonna ask. No, 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 no. Sorry, it's just man. it's just always that glow from him, and there's such a peace, I just know it's Jesus. But that encounter that I had, I fell hook line and sinker in love with him there and then. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I didn't want to leave when he was told me, right, you need to go back now. Nope, yeah. I don't want to leave. I am right. staying here. No, he was like, you need, you need to leave. You need to, to, mm. to meet the Christian women in the UK. So, guys, um, it's been a fascinating conversation. We could go on and on, as you know. But this is just about um, how much we've got time for today. So, hopefully, um, you've learned something from us. Um, just how you walk as a Christian. And I think, for me, the takeaway has really been falling in love with Jesus. Mm. In fact, Work that out because that's what I'm going to do. It's like a little assignment. Find mm. out, read people's stories, read people's testimonies of how they fell in love with Jesus. You know, what does love even mean to you? Because I find, guys, that when I met Jesus, my definition of love changed. Mm. It really mm -hmm. changed. I had a very different idea of what I thought love was, mm -hmm. and that changed. So, yes, thank you very much, Giselle, for um, speaking with us and sharing your ideas. And you too, Sidoni. Who is going to pray us out, ladies? Yes. This lady can pray. Yes. <laughs> yes. Go ahead, G. You've got the hat for it. No, I thought Sidoni was going to pray as well. Oh. You, did, you, right. you said Sidoni and I said this lady can pray. All right. Oh. Okay. I'll go for it. Go for it, Sidoni. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you so much that we are privileged to be called your children. We thank you so much that though we are unworthy, yet you sent your son to die so we can be worthy enough to approach the throne of grace. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for the gift of salvation. Thank you for Jesus. Help us, Lord, to fall in love with Jesus. Help us, Lord, to appreciate and recognize and really deep down in our hearts, know what it means to call Jesus our Messiah. Know what it means to have him as king of our lives. And because he has given up his life for us, that we in turn want to live a life that's pleasing to him. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for these lovely conversations that we're able to have on, on, on Thursday nights. Thank you, because I know, Lord, that they are changing lives and even if they're not at least they're starting conversations wherever they're being um, listened to they're getting people to reflect on their beliefs on their actions on their words and lord we know lord that all we can do is plant that seed and you heavenly father will bring it to wonderful fruition as you please thank you lord for um the grace to be able to live in such a sinful world Thank you for the Holy Spirit enabling us to live Christian lives. Give us wisdom, Lord, and help us always to remember, especially the new Christians among us, 
that though everything's permissible to us, it's not beneficial for us. And Lord, with that in mind, Lord, give us the strength to be able to say no when we need to say no. Give us the strength to be able to stand firm in our faith, especially when trials come. For we know, Lord, that you have conquered this world and you have conquered death. And Lord, that our eternity is secure because our lives are in your hands. Thank you for Giselle. Thank you for her healing. Thank you, Lord, for the blessing. That was her um, appointment. She didn't have to wait the stated time that they said she would. Thank you, Lord, because she's already feeling so much better. We ask, Lord, that as you please, Lord, complete her healing. Help her to be able to bounce around and jump around like she normally does. Um, because you will, Lord, get great pleasure from seeing her restored to full health. But thank you, Lord, that even though she hasn't been very well these last few weeks, you've enabled her and given her the strength to carry on um, preaching and sharing the gospel and fellowshipping and advising and pastoral work with all the women um, and everybody that comes in contact with her. Thank you, Heavenly Father, Kungum. thank you for her work and her life. And the way she's able to minister to other people in her everyday life at work and her wider friends and family. We ask, Lord, that you would keep and protect every single one of us until we come again together next Thursday. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you very, very much. And thank God for you too, Sidoni, and for everything that you're doing. Um, Christian women in the UK, we've seen it grow and grow, and it's phenomenal. Mm. And all glory to God. Mm. And also, we just for the integrity with which you run this ministry yep. and your own obedience. It's just worth appreciating and just thanking God to have somebody like you who's a very, a good example of what a leader is, a real servant. So we thank God for you. And so guys, have a wonderful evening and take care. We'll see you next week, God willing. Good night. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye.